Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 23. So in last episode, we went through the entire offseason. We also finished up the year five sim and uh, 601 rookie of the year. So back to back years with rookie of the years, which is great to see. And uh, yeah, then we got through the offseason and we're back up here for the start of another season. I am really excited to see what this team is like this season because obviously we still have a lot of young guys in the lineup and likely I am also going to be giving a shot to Gary McAllister this year so we are going to be having a couple pitchers that we drafted in our lineup and yeah just very excited to see what uh, guys like this could do in the lineup going forward especially guys like Cardenas and uh, obviously Garth Howe, Schneider that type of thing. But uh, yeah, it should be an exciting season ahead. Also, we got to scout out the upcoming draft, which should be quite fun. Hopefully, it's a good draft class again, so we could target some of the areas we need. But I think we're doing pretty good drafting-wise over the last uh, few years, and we're starting to have our team come together for the future. Because if we go to our like death chart, for example, you can see that right now we don't look the best, obviously, on paper. But if we go to, like say, 2032... Sixto could be potentially a 98, How could be a 92, Pinero might be a 79, like we might be actually competitive and decent within a five year span potentially if we get the right growth from our right guys and add more good prospects in. I think first base is definitely somewhere that's a little bit weak, but Bill O'Donnell being on first base might be okay. So first base I think might be something we target in this year's draft if there is a good amount of first baseman. But uh, yeah, the future definitely looks bright here in Vancouver. But before we get into doing some scouting and simulating some of the season, I do have quite a few comments to go over. So the first one is from uh, Daniel Eichenberger, or Eichelberger. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, it's just because of the freaking username things now that uh, YouTube has. But he says, would definitely put Gary in the MLB next year because he's 23, like you said. If he was 20 to 21, then another year in AAA, but he'll... Be 24 next year. It's time, lol. So, um, yeah, I definitely think Gary is going to get a shot in our MLB lineup this year. We do only have 37 people on our 40 man roster, so Gary is going to get added to the 40 man roster and he will have a shot on our roster this year and he'll be moved to the MLB for spring training. Um, there was one other guy I was really interested in maybe adding to our 40 man, and that is our closer, Dennis Lake. I might honestly do that. I don't think he's going to get much worse. or him, He is going to get better for sure. But should we wait a year for him or not? He might be a good September call-up option. But hmm. right now we have still Tommy Persons. We also do have Ken Robert that's in AAA and Guzman. So yeah, I think we're going to actually add Dennis Lake to our 40-man as well. And he's going to be in the MLB team this season as well. Just because of the fact... Uh, Ken Robert and Guzman are on the uprise. I would rather those guys be getting good playing time in double or triple. Um, Dennis Lake, I think, is ready pretty much for the majors almost at this point. Like, he's got good hits per nine, solid Ks and nine. Based on balls and nine, is a little bit low. Same with home runs, runs and nine. But uh, he's pretty balanced. He should be a somewhat good closer. And I think being in the MLB, he'll get a decent amount of growth. So he's also going to be up here for the season. The next comment is from Joseph D. M. Miller, who says, In a draft to glory, I'd go for the front-loaded contracts for the players doing well. Think about how many years you'd uh, think it'd take uh, to become a World Series contender and lock them up till that point at least. That is my gut instinct. So um, he's saying for guys like Hot Howl and stuff like that, for now, how much our years do we got and stuff? We still have a lot of leeway with uh, Garth Howe and his contract. Same with Cardenas. Yeah, Gardenas has three more years of arbitration, so I probably don't want to lock him up too long term yet, but I think once these guys are getting closer to being out of our beers, then we're going to give them big contracts, and uh, you said front-loaded contracts, so we're more than likely going to give them front-loaded contracts where they're making a lot of money in the beginning, and then towards the end of their career, they'll make less money. So we'll probably end up doing that in this episode, just giving two short-term contracts. We won't do anything, anything long-term just yet, though. The next comment is from Nick Bucker, Barons OC, who says, Cardenas is a 76 with 85 potential. That's about right for a guy hitting 285 with a 2.9 war, Golden Glove winner. And I agree, yeah. Um, Cardenas has been probably one of my favorite players so far in this series. I don't know if he's going to be eventually the all-time favorite, but... Uh, He's off to a really good start in his career, and if he's a, like a career 280 to 300 hitter, 
he will be a very useful player for us, especially in like playoff runs and stuff like that, because maybe he's the type of guy that we could easily get on base and bring in to score runs and stuff like that. And in the next three comments and final three comments are from Rebecca Weeswoods. The first one says, never discount triple A uh, players or double A players where you know that's how high they'd go. Injuries happen in September, call-ups happen. They could be great for call-ups, which is true. So if we have any players in the minors that we have on our 40-man roster that actually might be a good player in the majors, adding them to our 40-man roster, we might uh, want to do that just to see how they actually do at the MLB level before they're a full-time player the next season and stuff like that. But I don't think anybody's on the cusp of being added to our 40-man just yet. Also, Rebecca says, I don't like backloaded uh, if you have the budget. If your payroll is mid to low, then back it. But like hockey, look who's going to be needing money or needing money. So uh, Rebecca doesn't like backloaded. And they, I, I agree, backload is probably not great considering obviously they'd be dropping off when they're making the most amount of money. So it's best to capitalize when they're at their peak and make that much money at their peak. And then obviously, as they become worse, they also make less. So that would be probably the best bet for a lot of these young guys. And finally, the last comment from Rebecca says, no long-term contracts yet, wait one to two more years, which adds exactly what I was thinking because uh, with like Cardenas, he has like three years of ARB. So if we wait two years, then he'll have one year of ARB and we could literally give him a long-term contract at that point. While Garth Howe has still one year of R&W and then he has three years of ARB still. So one to two years is probably the right spot for a lot of these guys. So, But anyways, we are going to sign these guys up here right now for one to two year deals. Yeah, that's nice and cheap for Garth Howe because anything after two years, like if we go to five years plus, then he's almost wanting like eight, like basically like ace money. So at some point, we're going to have to give him a big contract like that. But for right now, we're just going to do a simple two year deal. And uh, yeah, 2.5 should get it done. Perfect. And we'll do the same with a couple other guys we've drafted. Cardenas wants 33 mil, which is kind of crazy. But uh, let's see if we could talk him down a little bit here. 4.8 should be fine. I'm okay with giving these guys money. They deserve it. Steve Schneider's a little bit more of an expensive one than I'd like, but uh, he does have a bright future potentially for this team too. So I think he has also the same amount, yeah, pretty much the same amount of years as uh, as Howe did. So we'll just give him what he's asking for. And then I think everybody else we didn't draft. Actually, Ollie Gentleman we did. He wants the same amount of price. We'll just give these guys their money. Will be nice considering we drafted these guys. I feel like they deserve at least a decent amount of money, even if we're overpaying them a little bit. I really uh, can't wait to see what these guys develop into the. And the rest of these guys we didn't draft, so I'm not too worried about signing them just yet. But there we go. There's the contract extensions. Let's uh, advance to the regular season here. And we'll start scouting out. Let's just make sure we got our right roster set up and all that stuff first. So yeah, Gary McAllister and Dennis Lake, both in the MLB. Yeah, we only have two plus 80 overall plus players, but uh, we're starting to build up a pretty good foundation here, I'd like to say. Let's make sure our pitching rotation and stuff is set up properly. So how is the one guy? Gary as the number two. These other three aren't ours, so it doesn't really matter. Dennis Lake as the closing pitcher. That is perfect. Let's go to double and triple as well. Make sure the right guys are in. I believe we have one more starting pitcher. Brian Morris. How good of his stamina? Let's get Brian Morris in as a starter. Because he actually is a starter. Him and Montero. Um, what else we got here? Pablo Silva is technically a starter. I will put him in as a starter, I think, as well over Gallegos. And I think Sparbori... Hmm, wait, Pablo Silva's stamina is pretty solid, but Sparbori's is better. I'll get Sparbori in over uh, Rodriguez, because I don't think I drafted Rodriguez. Yeah, I didn't. I want to get our drafted guys into these spots, so they're actually developing as best as possible. Yeah, that looks good. And then AAA wise let's make sure we got everything set up. We actually might have to do auto-adjust lineups, because somebody's going to have to probably get called up to triple, because triple looks like it's a little bit barren in pitchers. So... Yeah, we don't actually have a lot of starting pitchers down there in triple. Hmm. So we might have to call up somebody from double to triple. Which I don't really know if there's anybody that's worth doing that to. But there you go in terms of our pitching rotation. Lineup wise, let's just make sure we got the right guys in. Um, yeah, it looks good. 
Looks good. We have everybody in. Gelman's the leadoff man, followed by O'Donnell, Cardenas, then Sixto in that four spot because he's a great hitter. Ronaldo Hernandez, who we got in the Rule 5 draft, Snyder. Glenelyn Hill's the only one and O-Stranger that we didn't draft. So we're starting to get that lineup together, which is great. Um, the rest of this, I could probably just go auto on, but looks like we're getting all our prospects in, which is great. So there is that. Let's uh, get rid of this notification because these notifications can kick rocks. I don't know why it has to notify me every year about searching for players, but it apparently does. Let's advance a few days, and then we'll get into scouting out some players. But um, I've been playing a lot of MLB, actually, outside of YouTube because I do have in like an Oakland A's one that I'm running, and uh, it's been a lot of fun building up teams and stuff like that. So I am kind of now a little bit more experienced franchise mode-wise, I should say. Um, let's auto fix pet, pitching staff and on that too. We won our first game of the season, but then we lost the second game. So that's not great, but oh well. Let's get rid of these notifications because I do not like how it just pops up with this so many times. We should actually check the scout or the, uh, the training as well while we're at it. Make sure players are set to the right training things. Um, so let's start off with, uh, yeah, that's fine. We're, how is, uh, we should probably get Gary into the same scenario with the hits and K's and nine and all that. The rest of the players, I'll just leave on general stuff, whatever, I think. Hmm, maybe based on balls and home runs and nine. Actually, the control and velocity and break makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, I think we'll just leave the rest of these guys where they are right now. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's uh, get uh, the contact hitting. Actually, the power hitting. Let's uh, make Jeff Pippo a good power hitter. He's already really solid as a power hitter. Let's improve that power hitting even more because we do need a power hitter for the future. And maybe he's that type of guy. So let's address that. And uh, let's get into scouting out some prospects here for the upcoming draft. We are going to do the method that we were doing last year, but we are going to improve it a little bit. We're going to scout out for five weeks, I think, instead of four weeks to start the season just generally. And then we're going to go more individual-wise. What do we need the most, really, on this team? We still have a lot of things we need. Center field, right field, shortstop. Let's uh, take a look first, actually, at the draft class. Maybe this will help us a little bit better. What are we looking like for drafts? So it's looking like a pitcher-heavy draft. Starters and closers, which we definitely need starters and closers and relievers. There is a shortstop, though. I wouldn't mind scouting out, though, because we do need shortstops as well. So I guess we'll start out uh, by scouting some starting pitchers with the pitching scout, which is probably this guy. Yeah, it's probably this guy. So we'll have him start out getting on some starting pitchers in the West for, uh, I guess, for, yeah, one week or two weeks. Probably two weeks, actually. And then we'll have another pitcher scout because I think pitching is probably the most important thing for us right now. We do have two good pitching prospects, but after that, we need to develop quite a bit more. So we'll also have uh, this guy starting out uh, with uh, pitching prospects as well. Even though he is also good at positional players. We'll get him to the central. So these guys will do west and central for the first two weeks. And then we'll flip them over to east and international. And then we have Stoitz who's decent at positional players. But he's not fantastic. Maybe we want to look for a new scout for him instead. Replace him with a new scout. Because he doesn't look the best in terms of scouts. And we could probably find a better replacement. So... Who is better in terms of, like, uh, positional players? Okay, this guy's fantastic, but we don't have the money. Uh, this guy, we probably have to go down to, let's see, 82,000 plus 9,000 is, like, 91,000. So we only basically have, like, $91,000 to get another scout. So let's see, one that's good at positional players uh 96 at positional players solid efficiency not as good efficiency i should say but he is much better at positional players the discovery is right around the same the pitcher number is worse yeah this guy might be okay we'll take bill armas for stoitz just because we need somebody to get out some positional players we'll probably get out some short stops with him because i think we do need short stops quite a bit 
Obviously, some players can move over to shortstop, but it might be a good idea to scout that out. So let's get him on shortstops. And uh, he'll start off in the West. Basically, every week, the shortstop scout will uh, change locations. Every two weeks, these guys will change locations. And uh, I think for the final fi uh, week five, we'll probably just do a little bit different in terms of scouting, like maybe relievers instead. I don't really know. This is a work in progress or scouting method, but I want to just try and find as much uh, prospects as we possibly can. So um, let's go auto fix active roster on triple A. Wow. Okay. That's a really good week. I don't know why we're starting off so good. Five and three to start the season. That's a lot better than uh, years past. <laughs> so that's good. Let's go another week. Maybe for the final week, we'll uh, scout out uh, whatever region had the most uh, pitchers we found from. I don't really know. We found 14 new starting pitchers, 18 new ones there. Might be a decent amount in the central, but let's edit this to the east, and we'll edit you over to international for the next two weeks. And then this guy, actually I should have changed every one week. I meant to do that already, but whatever. We'll get you to uh, the central for this next week. And then for the final week, you'll do one of the other ones. I don't know if we're going to really find anything super good in this draft but uh, with the general scouting, but at least we're kind of changing the method a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's actually terrible. That is terrible. Youngster Brian Morris, who I believe we just drafted like not too long ago, has been injured with torn labrum, which means he is out over six months, which uh, that ends his season already. And if this guy has this type of problem going forward, he uh, his career could be in jeopardy in a sense. Like, if he gets a lot of injuries like this, he might uh, end up retiring quite young, which is not great. He has only C potential, so that's okay. But at the same time, uh, you don't like to see that, especially with a prospect. We are actually doing a lot better than I expected to start the season. I don't know why we're winning games, but apparently we're winning games. <laughs> That's going to hurt our draft spot probably going forward, but oh well. And then we'll change over to... Let's go international for this one on east. And uh, then for the final week five... Looks like there's a lot of international uh, prospects in terms of starting pitchers and east. So I guess I will change these guys over to relief pitchers for those divisions as well. For the final week. And then week five, we'll start scouting out individual players a little bit more. So let's see if we could uh, keep off up to this uh, good start that we're on, even though it's a below of 500. Uh, Pinero has been injured, so that's not great. That's one of our better prospects out one to two weeks. We actually do have some shortstop prospects, but they're a long ways away is the thing. So I don't know if I should have shouted out uh, shortstops, but it's really hard to like pinpoint exactly what we need in specific because we need a lot of different things on this roster. Wow, yeah, still 13 and 15. We're I don't know why we're simulating right around 500 because our roster is not really that great on paper unless somebody's going off. Hmm, that's insane. I know we're not even in a playoff spot. But we're three and a half games back of uh, a wild card spot, or actually the lead a league in our division, or league lead. What am I trying to say? <clears throat> Let's go to scouting here and see what we found for prospects. Uh, we'll start off with our pitching scout. He will scout out pitchers in specific. Let's see if there's anybody with maybe a 99 potential and high overall. Bobby Hyde. Might as well scout out him. See if he's like Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> uh, we'll scout out with you. Positional players likely. Yeah, positional players for sure. Uh, that shortstop might be good. So we'll uh, scout out Greg Wiggins. <clears throat> And then for this other scout, he's better with positional players, but he can scout either or. So what do we got for maybe 99 potential guys? Closing pitcher, eh. I don't really want to scout out more closers, but some of them might have high ceilings, so might be important to scout one out. There is a third baseman that might be decent, but he might be a really low overall as well. Let's get that third baseman scouted out as well. Actually, we don't really need third baseman, but you know what? I'll still scout him out. He might have a high ceiling. Hard to really tell at this point. It's funny that the draft is literally now in 69 days. <laughs> uh, Pinero's back. Let's go auto on that. And we lost almost every game that weekend. Brian Morse is eligible to be reinstated. Let's go auto on that as well. 
We might be still the worst team in our division, but uh, this year we are definitely winning our most games, it seems like, at this rate. Um, nobody fully scouted yet, but uh, Zimmer might be decent still. Uh, these other two might have high ceilings and high overalls, but they also might be low overalls. Can't really tell just yet, but I don't know how much players we're going to have 100% scouted by the end of this uh, scouting period. Hopefully we find some good ones over this stretch, though. And Pinero's been injured again now with a fractured forearm for two to three months. So that's why we're scouting out shortstops is because Pinero seems now to be a little bit injury prone. That's not good. Not good that we're drafting players with injury problems or they end up getting injury problems. Let's go on on that. I don't know why we're still simulating right around 500. 17 and 24 is definitely our best season yet. So at this rate, at least. Uh, Zimmer's been fully scouted, and he is not good. So third basemen seem to be not that good in this draft, so I should not scout out any more third basemen, in my opinion. Uh, let's uh, scout out more starting pitchers with this guy if there's any 99 potential ones. Closers, not so much. We do have good closers already. There is this guy, Gerald Kingman, who might be fantastic, so let's get him scouted out. And uh, the other guys are still not scouted out fully. We might need scouts with better discovery or whatever it is, uh, efficiency. Because uh, these guys are taking their time, it seems like, to find out if they're good or not. Let's go auto on that, because that's not a prospect I drafted either, is that. Um, and yeah, we're still hovering. Well, we're well below 500, but we're still at almost 20 wins already, which is pretty great. So let's see what we got here for scouted out. These guys are not fully scouted yet, but uh, they're looking okay still. Yeah, they're looking still pretty good, but it's a little bit worried that their overall is low. So I don't like that. Let's go another week. But uh, yeah, maybe we need new scouts with better efficiency. Yeah, some of these guys are just taking their sweet-ass time trying to figure out if they're good or not. Which we don't have all the time in the world. Okay, they're all at 100%. Uh, Gerald Kingman is definitely the best out of the bunch in terms of higher overall. The other guys might be project players, so it's a little bit of a risk. But there's that. Let's see what else we got here for starting pitchers or relievers, maybe even. Um, Anthony Carruth. Sure, we need to scout out relievers anyway, so might as well scout them out. Even though relievers, it's a bit of a risk probably taking one so early on. Uh, let's see what else we got here for infielders. Oh, a catcher. Yeah, let's get out this catcher. Yeah, let's get out the catcher. We need to find out if that catcher is good because we do need a catcher prospect probably at some point. That's got a good ceiling. This guy might be a low overall though, but we'll still scout him out anyways. Um, and then we will try and find another good pitcher maybe here. Uh, maybe this Archie Hagen guy. Is there anybody maybe with a really high overall? Todd Goss. Todd Goss. He might be good. He might be a really good reliever. There's also John Williams. Let's get John Williams get it out, and then we'll probably take a look at Todd Goss. See if we can find anything out about those guys. Okay, 22 and 38. How much more weeks do we got the scout? Still another four weeks. That's good. But I need our scouts to do a little bit more of an efficient job at this, because they are taking their time. Also, at the end of this episode, we'll definitely take a look at player stats so far and see who's been doing what. Because hopefully we're getting some good results from our young guys that are in the MLB at this point. Uh, let's see what we got here. No 100% scouted except for the reliever who looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. He doesn't have a high ceiling, but he's maybe got a good overall at least at a young age. So that's good. Um, we'll change this over to Todd Goss. Because if Goss is a 93 overall out of the draft, that'd be insane. But I doubt it. Still might as well take a look at him. See if he's got good. Right now, uh, that catcher is not looking too great. He might be okay, but I don't think he's the first overall pick worthy. John Williams, though, might be the first overall pick this year, potentially. If he's like a 79 overall and has 94 ceiling, that'd be great. That would be great. So, we'll try and find out a little bit more about him. Let's go another week. Um, auto on Jimenez, because that's nobody I care about. McMahon has been injured with a concussion out one to two weeks. He must have got hit by a ball or something. Yeah, some of our prospects are having some injury troubles, which I don't like, but it is what it is. 
We are 28 and 45. Yeah, this is definitely our best season yet. For sure. Um, Todd Goss might still have a really high overall. 62 to 85 overall. And uh, maybe a 91 potential. Todd Goss might be the man. Even though he's a reliever. He might be the man. We'll see how good he is once we get him fully scouted out. Uh, that catcher is not looking too good. So I am going to remove him already. I am going to remove him. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't feel like we're going to find somebody insanely good. I don't know. Unless uh, when we did general scouting, if we found out somebody really good way back in the draft. But I don't know. And yeah, John Williams is still looking okay. He did opt out of his doctor's exam, which is a bit concerning, but it's not too much of a concern. Let's go another week here. Yeah, our team is doing pretty good in terms of actually winning some games this year. So that's uh, great to see. 29 and 50, obviously not a great record, but still. Okay, so John Williams is fully scouted out, and he is going to be pretty good. He's got a high starting overall at 1860 to 75. And uh, he might have a ceiling of a 90, so he might be a solid pick for sure. I don't know where we're drafting, but that might be a solid pick. And, uh, of course, Goss dropped off a lot after that uh, scouting out. He's not going to be that great. He's a solid option potentially for a second rounder, but he might go in the first round. Damn. Uh, let's take a look at the later parts of this draft, see if we can find any maybe great steals here. There actually might be a good closer, though, early on, so maybe we do want to scout out one of these closers. Yeah, that might be a good option. Yeah, let's get out this closer because there might be a unanimous number one that we have not found out yet. And uh, with this guy, we will scout out. Hmm, our scouts are saying this Rico Ornalis guy might be a number one pick. Right now, they have him as the number one pick in the draft. Let's get him scouted out as well because we might as well find out about him. And Lucius Patterson is not looking the greatest. He might be a project player, but we'll still scout him out anyways. And this is our final week of scouting in this episode just because of the fact that we don't want to go right up to the draft accidentally. Oh, no. Sixto has been injured with a broken shin. Why are we getting slapped with injuries to our prospects? Why can't it be just a bunch of no-names? That's an injury I wish I could take back. Oh, man. Like Giancarlo probably has developed really well so far this season. Like he probably is a lot higher overall now. But uh, broken shin, that is not great. We'll go auto fix lineups on that. Let's go through this game as well. And yeah, this is the last week for scouting. So uh, let's take a look at what we've already scouted out. And then you guys can give me some feedback on who you think we should draft. I don't think we did a great job scouting wise this year. But let's go what to what we scouted out. Uh... Let's go our scouting rank. Yeah, team rank. There we go. So we have Ornalis, who we did not fully scout, but he looks to be probably solid. We also have uh, Bobby Hyde, who is looking pretty good. Bobby Hyde might honestly be the best option because he's not supposed to go even in the first round. Or he might not. The bonus demand is also pretty low. The interest is high. I think Bobby Hyde might be my top pick for this draft right now, just based on where he's supposed to go. Um, Gerald Kingman, though, is also a really good option. He also might have a low potential, though. He might only be a B potential player. This might not be the best draft class, because some of these guys might be A potential, but some of them might be B. There's also uh, Greg Wiggins for shortstop, which might be solid. Mark Walker is looking solid as well as a closer, but nothing insane. Yeah, it's really tough to tell who's the best player in this draft. John Williams looks pretty solid, too. There's a lot of players we didn't even scout out too. But it uh, should be interesting to figure out if we actually have a good draft ahead of us or not. I feel like it's going to be a weaker draft based on this. Yeah, I, I just feel like it's going to be a weak draft. Like where most players, like the top player in the draft is a B potential guy, but he's got high overall. That's my guess. I don't think there's going to be a generational talent. Is to me, it definitely looks like a weaker class ahead. I don't know what about you, what you guys think, but to me it just looks like a weak class, maybe in general. Like, who knows, maybe there's a random steal out here. Like, maybe this Cosmo Guillen guy is going to be the next, I don't know, the next best outfielder. But it's impossible to tell. Hmm. There's also this uh, Grover Riston guy, or Rit Ritson guy, that we did scout out a little bit, apparently, when we were doing our general scouting. 
See, that's at least a good thing about having our general scouting is now we have, like, players that are supposed to go late in the draft that we've scouted out a decent amount, like this Huey Motion guy. I scouted him out actually by myself, but still, some of these pitchers, we would have not known anything about, like, Carlos Murillo might have a really high potential, might be a little bit of a low overall, though, for a 21-year-old, but he might be somebody we take late just to give us a chance at maybe finding somebody huge. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. In terms of what the draft is looking like, Brian Coleman, what a name. So there is the top 100 potentially. I'll let you guys tell me what we should be scouting out for the final week with these uh, priority things. So. so there's that. Let's take a look at our player stats and stuff like that so far on the season. Starting off with uh, Garth Howe. He's been really good. He's been really good unless his FIP is bad, but uh, he's been really good this year. He is definitely turning it around 5-9, and nine, so he is winning games. He's got a respectable ERA and whip too. So Garth Howe is having, yeah, definitely a better time this year than last year. Like, look at the difference. And let's see. FIP is a lot better too, so he is improving quite a bit. Hopefully he continues to do that. Uh, Gary's having a little bit of a rough time, but he is developing rapidly quick because he's now in the MLB. He's up to a 78 at 24. Yeah, that 5.03 ERA is not great. The 1.34 whip isn't terrible, but the FIP is getting better too. So, yeah, seems pretty good from our starting pitchers that are in the MLB. Sucks about Brian Morris's injury, though. He was off to a good start in uh, AAA, but he's out four to five more months. Montero is getting better, looks like, as well. That's good, considering he's got the A potential. Not going to focus too much on the prospects yet, because we'll find that out at the end of the season, but... Ooh, wow, that guy's been terrible, but he's not even somebody I drafted, so I don't really care, but oof. Yeah, I'm not going to focus on the prospects in double and triple yet. I'm going to focus just on the MLB. Uh, Dennis Lake as a closer has been pretty solid. The ERA may be a little bit high for a closer, but he's up to a 78 as well, so I think that was the right call to put him in the MLB. Yeah, the ERA and the whip is pretty good. The FIP is fantastic, but it's usually like that for closers, but yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, what else we got here for prospects I drafted? Well, let's just take a look at general MLB players on our team. Hernandez hasn't been that good. Cuero has been okay, but not fantastic. Cardenas has struggled this year, batting average-wise. He is up to a 77, but his batting average is getting worse and worse every year, which is a bit of a concern. Yeah, he's probably having his worst year yet. He is having his worst year yet. So hopefully he improves a little bit here. Um, what else we got here for players that I care about? Ben Gentleman, no. How's Pip been, actually? Pip's been fantastic in triple. He should be in the MLB next season, maybe. Uh, Schneider's been not great. He hasn't developed it all, too. I am definitely worried about Steve Schneider. I don't think he's going to reach that B potential. But he is improving a little bit. In terms of batting average and OPS wise. But he's still having a struggling time in the MLB. Uh, then George Pinero, who was Yeah, injured. That's not good. Uh, one to two more weeks, but still he was off to a good start in triple. <clears throat> then we have John Carlos Sixto, who was off to a solid start. The average is a little bit low. But uh yeah, actually, he's having a little bit of a worse year than the last year as well. Like, I don't know why the team is regressing a little bit, but the team is winning more games. Seems a little bit weird. So there is Sixto. Then we got Ollie Gelman batting at 200. Oof. Yeah, I don't really like some of the statistics from our hitters. Like, it's good to see that our pitching is improving with Garth Howe, but it's been a bit of a rough time for some of these guys. And then Bill O'Donnell has been good. Bill O'Donnell's been good apparently as of late. He's batting at 240, so not the best either. But being a 65 at 22, he's developed pretty quick. He's got 10 home runs and 29 RBIs, which is almost as much as last year home run-wise. Yeah, he's improving. So he's one of the bright spots on the team for sure. So there is all that. I didn't actually take a look at the top prospects. No, I did actually last episode, right? Yeah, I think I did. Is there anybody that's actually surprising me this year or what? Let me just take a look through this and see if there's anybody up there in the league leaders at the moment. 
And then I'll end this episode probably there because we've been recording for like 35 minutes. And I'm kind of scared that my Elgato is going to randomly freeze. I'm um, not really seeing anybody up there in terms of anything. Oh, actually, oh, that's why I'm just literally tripping between L and AL. Oops, my bad, guys. My bad. Let's take a look. Oh, Cardenas is up there in that bat. It's not that that matters too much. Gentleman is up there in triples. Glenn Hill is too, but he doesn't matter too much. And Bill O'Donnell is up there too. So we're getting a lot of extra runs or extra base hits, I guess, triple wise. Not as much on the double front. Schneider is up there in stolen bases. So there is some positives to take away from the start of the season, which is good. Um, let's see about pitching wise. ERA, no. Is the whip up there for uh, how or no? Because that'd be nice. No. Actually, it might be just outside of the top 10. Yeah, Garthau's 12th in whip. So, that's a positive. That is definitely a positive. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory Franchise Mode. So, in next episode, we'll continue to... Uh, well, we're going to continue to sketch out for one more week on some prospects. We're going to have the draft, and hopefully we could get some more good prospects in. But the team is starting to turn it around a little bit. I don't know if it's because of the amount of guys that have already been on this team long term or if it's the guys that we're drafting that are making an impact. But I think we're definitely on our way to being a good team eventually down the road. So, anyways, link down below, and I'll see you guys next time.